Mothersmother.com. Let's take a look at the pre-market action here. I want to show you what I'm observing here. The Nasdaq is right now called to open lower by about 15 or 16 points. Now, based on where the RSI closed yesterday, now remember this is for trading for Wednesday, 21st March 2018. And so March 21st, 2018, this is pre-market. We have about, let's call it about an hour, 20 minutes before the market opens officially. The NASDAQ is looking like it might be starting the day lower. Now, I'll show you why this is significant on a short-term basis because if you take a look at the NASDAQ where it closed yesterday, the daily RSI closed at 50.95. So we know that if the NASDAQ today goes on to break and move below 50, we might be looking at a market that might stage a big down day into the close. So let's say if you come into this short and we came into this short, in fact, I think the last um, short ideas I sent to subscribers yesterday towards the close of the session because I could see this developing the idea that the NASDAQ might slash below 50 for a big down day. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back at the close to see how things play, played out. So two things might happen here. Number one, either we are going to move below RSI 50 for a sizable down day for anybody who trades short term or the market might hold above 50 after opening the session below 50. So holding above 50 is a sign of a market that is stable to bullish. But for now, if we go on to crack below RSI 50, I would expect the day to be a down day of um, expanded size to the downside, maybe 1% plus to the downside. And this is gonna be the trade for the day into the close. Usually when you slash below 50, when you move above 50 or below 50, you tend to close either at the highs of the day if you are moving above 50 or you close at the lows of the day if you are moving below 50. And this tends to be for a big move. When I say a big move, I mean anything in the region of plus or minus 1% to the downside if you are moving below 50, 1% to the upside minimum when you are moving above 50. So I'll pause the video here. I'll be back at the close. All right. Fast forward about six and a half hours later. The market is just about to close. And this is for March 21st, 2018. Here we are seeing the market uh, close to the end of the session with about three minutes, two minutes to go. We'll see where we close for the day now. So the market is down slightly. But if you really want to understand what has happened throughout the process of this day, you'd have to go and take a look at the highs of the day. So let me show you the, the highs of the day. And this is about, let's call it about maybe two hours ago, an hour and a half ago. The Dow was up 194 points. In fact, at the highs, the Dow was up more than 200 points. So we've come off the highs about an hour and a half ago and we are now pulling back into the close as you can see it's not the biggest down day of course just a slight down day for the Nasdaq which was the reason for this video down about only 0 0.2 let's take a look at the charts here so looks like we might not get that big swoosh below 50 so let me update this chart here so we can see right now the NASDAQ is doing its best to hold above RSI 50. So I guess the best way to summarize this is because we came into this session short and we would want to see a big down day, of course, naturally, then it would make sense that the NASDAQ stays above 50. So we can get another chance for a down day tomorrow. All right, so right now it looks like the market is going to hold around current levels and the NASDAQ might just end 
lower for the day, just a tad bit below 50, might even set the stage for a good move in the next session. And in fact, as I am talking here, I'm seeing the market losing more ground. Keep in mind, about an hour and a half ago, the Dow was up about 210 points. So in about, let's call it about an hour and a half, we've lost almost 250, 260 points. Well, there's the close. We'll see how the numbers settle out here. And we'll take a look at the RSI levels. And keep, remember, this video was primarily to understand how we can use the RSI 50 cross whenever it happens, if it happens. So the numbers are settling out at the close. Now, I have to be honest here and state that I was actually expecting a big down day. Hence the reason why I recorded the pre-market action. And what happened here is we did not get the reaction I was expecting. No surprise, the market is not always going to give us what we want. But again, we came into this day short. And keep in mind, even though today we don't see the big reaction here, we don't see a big down day. Keep in mind, if you go back about two days prior to this video being recorded, we had the NASDAQ drop here it dropped almost two and a half percent almost two and a half percent during this drop here when it moved below rsi 50. so we do know that the rsi 50 crossing is legit we can see here dropping below rsi 50 led to a huge down day there here we can see there's other periods where we have big drops for example, here, we have a re nice recovery back above RSI 50, which you can't see there, but you can see two-day reaction to the upside. Here, it took two days to move back above RSI 50 for a nice recovery. And so you can see a lot of examples. Big down day here because of dropping below RSI 50. Big down day again as you drop below 50. So today I was expecting something in the magnitude of a 1% drop and all I got was a dinky 0.26% drop. So I think it's important for me to record this video to show you that it does not happen all the time. I think it's easy to say it happens a lot and sometimes to expect it always. But the point of it and this video does verify that is it is not going to happen every day. But the key takeaway is we should understand how to use it and how you use it is to position yourself before the move. Let's say you are wanting to be long or let's say you are bullish and the market closed just below 50. Now, if you are bullish, you have a reason to hold because if the market wants to stage a good rally, it's going to use the excuse of coming to test a 50. If it, on the day it moves back above 50, you can expect a good size reactional move to the upside. So you get ahead of those things is what I'm saying. For example, we got ahead of this down drop here in anticipation of a potential move below 50. We got that move below 50 and we also had a, a nice day to cushion our entry. Now, one thing I want to point out here is if you take a look at the other parameters, for example, take a look at the hourly, which is something I was watching throughout the course of this day. I saw the market coming back to test this break. And so even at the highs of the day when the Dow was up about 210, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, we can see here that I could see that the market pretty much in essence was coming back to test this recent break. And once I saw that the hourly chart was being rejected around current levels at the highs, also happens to be reject rejection at the RSI Whoops, RSI 50 level. This rejection at the blue line and also just below the RSI 50 level, which is why you see we come off the highs and get this sizable pullback into the close. And also, if you take a look, for example, at a smaller time frame, which is now the five minute window, this is the line the market was coming back to test. You see, this was the break of the highs there. And we know it was a break by simply just seeing that this was the break right here. That break 
Since then, the market's been responding to this level with short-term resistance. Remember, it's a five-minute window, so it gives you resistance worth, uh, you know, minutes. It's not going to give you a big sell signal. But if you use this here for micro moves, the market's been responding to this level. And even at the highs of the day, we went above the line, back below it. Once I saw that, I knew the reversal was in play. And the NASDAQ, if you take a look at the highs of the day, the highs of the day was at 7415, and it closed at 73. Four, five. So it's a huge drop from the highs into a day. In fact, off the highs here to the lows, in fact, to the lows here, that's more than a 1%, more than a 1%, whoops, a 1% plus drop from the highs here to the lows. Hope you can see that. So this reversal here did bring about a huge turnaround. But we did not get the RSI 50 crossing that we were expecting. But at least we did not get out of our positions based on the hourly and the five minute chart. By the way, to, to be putting this video in a relevant time frame or in relevant framework, is what I'm trying to say. You can see one of the reasons why we are bearish in the current market environment is right now, without knowing what the future brings, we turned bearish, and I've been bearish because the market did drop back below the buy point on a weekly chart. So this is a failed breakout on the weekly, hence the reason why we remain bearish, which might explain the intraday reversal lower. The market is not acting well, in my opinion, and I've been talking about this to subscribers or paid subscribers to moather.com. That once we broke below this, we have a good reason, a good foundation to be bearish. And also to summarize it, keep it as simple as possible. We can also see that on the monthly, NASDAQ is now back below the monthly buy point. So that's another problem here. So as, as long as the NASDAQ is struggling to hold above 7411.48, which goes back to this monthly closing high. As long as we are struggling to break out on the monthly after spending some time above this number, as long as we are below this number, that's another reason for one to expect lower prices, or at least to start expecting that the market could easily go into a major bear market because of the two failed breakouts. Otherwise, if the market is to do well, the first order of business is to retake the 7411.48 level. In other words, a breakout is needed if the market is to go higher. And on the weekly chart, we need the market to reclaim the level above 7505.77. So on the weekly time frame. For the market to be bullish yet again, it would need to reclaim this level. Otherwise, as long as the monthly and the weekly charts are failing to break out, we have solid reason and a solid foundation to continue expecting this market to be in trouble. So, even though the video was meant to be an RSI 50 cross, we've tied in other aspects as to why we are short. Maybe we might get that draft lower some other time but for now the market held rsi 50 but keep in mind we can even see here on the weekly charts on the week when the nasdaq is dropping below 50 you have a huge candle lower huge reaction whenever we move back above 50 huge reaction lower when we drop below 50 a recovery leg here as we move back above 50. so we still see that we can learn something from the RSI 50 crossing, even though it doesn't happen every time, just like it did not happen during today's session. Hope you find this video to be of some value. Actually, what I decided to do here is I decided to record the next day's action just to see whether the 
NASDAQ would spill over and have a movement, either a continuation of the drop below 50, or maybe even a stage a rally back above RSI 50. You can see here, looks like we are looking at a market that is going to gap down at the open, as you can see. These are the proposed opening numbers, and market is about to open here in about two to three minutes. Dow called down about 270 points. Here is a live streaming, and again, this is for March 22nd, 2018. What I'm going to do here is just to see whether this is going to turn out to be a big down day, potentially a follow through or a follow up from yesterday's NASDAQ move below RSI 50 that did not yield a lot of downside action. Keep in mind, again, we came into this day or we are coming in into this day short, as you've been aware, based on previous comments in this video. We can see here that the, let's go back to the NASDAQ daily. NASDAQ did close just a tad below the 50 RSI level. And we didn't get that big drop yesterday. But sometimes you'll notice it takes multiple days to correct that. Uh, and we've seen that when we're looking, for example, here, this recovery. About 50 took a couple of days, maybe three days. For that big move, instead of one big up day, the market did that in uh, small chunks. Ultimately, you can see even here, moved about 50 for multiple days market stage a nice run so we could be looking at a follow-through or a follow-up from yesterday's rsi 50 crossing point i'm trying to make here is there is of course evidence that you're not always going to get a big down day like we did here below 50 followed by a big up day as you drop as you move back above rsi 50. sometimes it appears it takes one or two sessions to actually reflect the movement above or below 50 and here we might be looking at a market that should have been down yesterday big but is doing so today as it crosses below rsi 50. So there is the market open. Let's take a look at the numbers here. Let's go to live. This is our futures trading. Let's go to live trading. So what I'm going to do here, I will record probably the first minute or so. And then I'll be back at the close to see what happens. Now keep in mind, I should stress this because the NASDAQ, closed with the RSI above 49.72. It is not out of the realm of possibility that you start the day lower and then you reverse. And the reversal intraday turns the NASDAQ positive and it has a chance to move the RSI above 50 for a big update. So sometimes I've seen the market do that. In other words, we still have to watch the RSI 50 as long as the NASDAQ is dropping below 50 as a continuation of yesterday's late afternoon drop. Remember, the drop below 50 was pretty much in the last second of trading or the last minute of trading. So it could be a carryover from yesterday's late RSI crossing. So in other words, if the market had continued trading overnight, non-stop, we would have had a big down day. This could be the continuation. Remember we were saying the RSI 50 crossing is going to coincide with a big movement. Generally, that means a 1% plus movement. And what we're going to do here is if the NASDAQ is truly staging a move lower, RSI 50 cross from yesterday's late movement below RSI 50. What this suggests is that we are looking at a potential down day where the market is going to pretty much close towards the lows of the day. Whatever the lows of the day are going to be, 
it's not going to recover. Generally, that's the case where when you cross 50, you go down. If you're crossing 50 on the way down, you tend to close towards the lows of the day. If you're moving above 50 and having a big up day, you tend to close towards the highs of the day. So I'll stop recording right here and I'll be back in about six and a half hours as the market is closing for the day. It would be interesting to see how things play out. In fact, if we take a look here, let me update that chart. This is the NASDAQ now showing the RSI at 43. It's becoming harder and harder for it to potentially stage a recovery. RSI 43. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 now trading at 40. Remember, S&P 500 had a big down day here. As it moved below 50. The Dow was already below 50. Has been below 50 longer. As you can see. And the Dow did have a big down day. When it moved below 50 here. So maybe it is now the Nasdaq's turn to do so. And the Dow had a couple 2-3 days down. As it moved below RSI 50. Let's take a look here at the hourly charts. Just for the sake of understanding Oh, by the way, before I forget, I'll make sure I take a look at the weekly charts and I'll explain why. Go to hourly. Where is that hour? There you go. So hourly, you can see as of yesterday, we dropped below RSI 50 on the hourly for that big rever intraday reversal from being up, I believe it was 200 points to closing down 50 points, give or take. And we can see one thing that could stabilize the market is whether it, whether or not it can find support on this line here, on the hourly. Now, I want to take a look at the, this is the Dow. Let's take a look. I want to go back to the, let's go back to the weekly charts. And the reason is the weekly now for the Dow is getting very close. To RSI 50. So keep in mind if the weekly ends up breaking this 50 level, that suggests a big down week. Remember, this is now coming in play. There's a possibility that this could actually get worse if the weekly charts move below RSI 50. Movement below 50 would suggest that we're going to have a big down week into the close of the week. That's the Dow. Take a look at the NASDAQ weekly. NASDAQ weekly is not close to 50. Let's take a look at the SPX. SPX is getting closer to 50. So if the S&P 500 goes on to drop below RSI 50, that is going to suggest to expect a bigger drop whenever it moves on the week. It moves below 50. Expect a big down week into the week close of that week. And again, let's go back to the Dow. The Dow is closest. So we can watch the Dow because should the Dow crack RSI 50 on the weekly time frame, that is going to suggest that there is reason to continue holding. And at the same time, if the Dow can hold and, st and stop here, if the Dow can support itself and not drop below RSI 50, then that starts looking like a market that eventually wants to have a short-term recovery at the least or a major recovery. So either we are going to be dropping below the weekly RSI level 50 for a big down week or the market starts showing support around here for signs of a recovery. So I'll stop right here and this is how the market is shaping up. We'll see how we go by the close but now we start watching that weekly RSI level for the Dow because if the Dow drops below 50 expect a big down week whenever it drops below 50 a big down week into the close of the week so in other words if you are short you have reason to continue watching the Dow in case the Dow slides below 50 that gives you more reason for an expected move to the downside we'll see how we close I'll be back at the close 
All right, as we left in the morning, this is where the Dow was trading. The Dow had its RSI at about 50.77, which meant that on the weekly chart, if the Dow was going to drop below 50, we get a big down week. And if not, then of course, if it can hold RSI 50, then that would be stabilizing the situation the market would recover. So this is the morning here of March 22nd at 9.34. So about four minutes into the open of March 22nd, 2008. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you, remember we were down, I think, 200 points, give or take, in the morning. I want to show you what is happening right now. Take a look at the Dow. The Dow has subsequently gone on to drop all the way to 47.8. Towards the close of the session here, we have about three minutes to go. If I can show you live trading, this is what it looks like. Now, it hasn't been a straight shot to the downside. I believe at some point the Dow was down 400. It rallied all the way back to be up to be down about maybe 180 so it did try and recover so this drop here we are seeing is pretty much over the last hour hour and a half the market was down about 200 points maybe 250 about three hours ago so not a straight shot to the downside but remember we came into the last two weeks short and also we were looking at the nasdaq primarily in fact let's take a look at the s p 500 on the weekly before we go to the dailies because right now the weeklies are what is moving the market s p 500 right now is back below 50 suggesting that this might be a big down week into the close of the week if the market does not stabilize around here and we take a look at the nasdaq next of course, the NASDAQ by now should be getting closer and closer to that RSI 50. So let's reason this out. If the NASDAQ also is going to drop below RSI 50, it means that we are going to be much, much lower by the end of the week. That's what it means. Now we go back, take a look at the NASDAQ daily, which was the genesis of this video. And yesterday we were down slightly as we crossed below RSI 50. But here now we see the true move as we move drop below 50 on the daily rsi keep in mind sometimes this rsi 50 crossing also happens to coincide with the 50 day moving average crossing all told we can see that this is the move we were expecting yesterday but the market crossed below 50 towards the last couple of seconds of yesterday's trading session there was no time for the market to drop and you can see we started the day with a gap down reflecting yesterday's rsi 50 cross so yesterday's rsi 50 cross towards the end of the session is what caused and we can see here the market just about to close so that's the close again remember not surprised that we are holding on to the losses the reason being that as you move below 50 on the weekly there is an emerging, emerging theme that this might be the around where we close for the end of the week because as you drop below 50 on the weekly RSI, you tend to have a reaction to the downside into the end of the week or end of the session. This time we're looking at weekly charts. Anyway, I don't want to make the video too lengthy. You've seen the reasoning why we've been short. We've seen why we wanted to get ahead of this down move, right? You've seen that. You've seen that we were anticipating or I was anticipating that the market might move below 50 for the NASDAQ. It has subsequently done so over the last two days. And earlier this morning, I started talking about this concept that the weekly charts might also bring added energy to the downside if we see the dow or the s p 500 dropping below 50 which is exactly what has happened here we see the market dropping below rsi 50 on the weekly 
which explains why we drifted lower. No surprise about the magnitude. Remember, RSI 50 crossings, either moving above or below 50, always introduces a big number into the mix. And one other observation, and I don't want to confuse this video with other things, but there's also now the concept that we are moving below RSI 69.1, and that also, the movement below 69.1, also tends to bring about its own energy. Here we can see we went above 69.1. We had a huge couple of months as we moved above it. Now we are moving below 69.1. So the key is whether we are going to hold above this or not. The more we drift below this number on the RSI on the monthly, the more we can expect lower prices. If we recover and hold back above the 69.1 level, that would be a short-term bullish signal for those who are playing short-term swing trade. And let me take a look at the SPX monthly. SPX also moving below that threshold of 69.1 keep in mind the market's been holding above 69.1 for more than 12 months pretty much more than 12 months and this has accounted for a magnificent 2007 bull market but at some point here we started turning bearish because we could see we were due based on other parameters let's take a look at the nasdaq here which has been the strongest lately the Nasdaq has yet to drop below the 69.1 threshold. But back to the theme here is the RSI 50 cross. We are getting that now on the weekly for the S&P 500 and for the Nasdaq. So this down move, I don't want to say is not a surprise, but honestly, it's not a surprise. And that's why we've been and I have been positioning my paid Moade.com subscribers for a bearish turn in the market and once we start inching closer to those rsi 50 levels on the weekly and it's initially on the monthly of course that told us or that told me we needed to be continuing holding on to those bearish ideas so this recent move in the market today in short is not a surprise if you understand how to use the technicals and if you understand how to use the RSI 50 cross. I'll end the video there just to save time. Eric Mother, Mother.com. As always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E A C S. Mwah. Woo! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!